And the faith, you know, contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Yes. What was that faith? It's what we're striving for right now. Yes. It's what we're trying to restore right now. Yes. Uh -huh. It's what the present day ministry is laboring in and the faith consists of the four gospels and the teachings of Christ, the, te the, the examples, the parables, the miracles, the signs, the wonders, yes. and then it consists of the history, yes. the short history, the brief history, the part of the history of the church that was in action, the book of Acts, 2,000 years ago, and the work of the apostles in a major. Yes. Uh -huh. And then the letters that God gave Paul, James, John, and Peter, and addressing the church and the conditions of the church. That, that, that the faith that we're to contend for is in that portion of the scriptures. Historically, it's good to know what happened to Israel under the law, the 37 books of the Old Testament. It's good to know that. But nothing about that determines your, your present existence or your present worship. We don't worship like they did. We don't worship like they did. The covenants changed. We're in another covenant. Uh, it's good to know it historically. Yes. It's good to take the types and the shadows yes. out of the old covenant. Uh -huh. But that's not our faith. All right. Amen. Come on. Our faith started when they would sat in darkness, yeah. saw a great light, Amen. and to them would sat in the region and shadow of death, light was sprung up. Yes. It started with the coming of Christ. Yes. Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. It started right there. That's our faith. That's your faith. You say, Brother Marlowe, do you have the faith of the Presbyterian? or so-and-so-and-so-and-so, or the New Covenant churches, or what? No, I don't. I don't have any of that faith. I'm not to contend for that faith. Because if they have the faith that was once delivered to the saints, praise the Lord for it. I'm seeking all of that. I, I, I want to worship in the New Testament faith. I want to live every day in the New Testament faith. I want to understand the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Yes. Because, let's, let's go a little further here in the book of Jude. And uh, he said, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. When was it delivered? So it was delivered in Acts the second chapter yes. On the day of Pentecost, when they came together at the culmination of three and a half years' ministry of Christ in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and the teachings from Matthew 5, blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are the meek, blessed are the pure in heart, and from there into the parables, there into the miracles, and then that small group <coughs> transferred it and brought it to the upper room oh, yes. in Jerusalem yes. and God so blessed them yes. and so gave them the covering of God yes. gave them the anointing of God and God chose that group to inaugurate the covenant of the early church oh, yes. and began that great ministry yes. uh -huh. that culminated itself in the New Testament church and they were together in one place, in one accord, in one mind. You know what God does for anybody that gets in one place? That's why that we felt the glory of God like we did last night. Amen. That's why we feel the glory of God. I couldn't contain myself. I, I could not contain myself. I don't know how some of you sit so calm out there. I couldn't contain myself. When Brother Howard was on his feet, and the Lord was using and anointing him, and Brother Bernard was weeping his heart out to us, I had to stand up and shout, praise God, praise God, because I know that's the faith that was once delivered to the saints. And when a church comes together, 
in one mind, in one accord, in one place, the same thing is going to happen again that happened 2,000 years ago. Suddenly, that's going to come from heaven. The sound of the rushing mighty wind, and it's going to fill all the house where we're sitting. You, the time will come right here in this place if we keep contending for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. And you won't be able to sit in a service like this very still because the Holy Ghost is going to fall on you that don't have it. And some of you that haven't spoken in other tongues is going to speak in a new language. Praise the name of the Lord. And you're going to sit in that chair and tremble and shake under the mighty power of God because God is going to let cloven tongues of fire again appear to the church and sit upon them and there's going to be miracles. You talk about coming up here and putting all on you and praying for you, that's going to go by the way. Did you know the time is coming when we'll never again hardly ever have a service where you come up and say pray for me because when the Spirit of God starts moving in the church and you're watching the Spirit and the Holy Ghost is coming in and the anointing of God is there and the power of the Spirit is there. You're going to sit there and feel a cancer leaving your body. Praise the name of the Lord. You may even spit some of it out of your system. Amen. I've been in meetings where people uh, they had to bring handkerchiefs to them because not only did demons leave them and evil spirits leave them, but I've seen the tissue of cancer expelled from the lungs of a sister or a brother when we prayed in the name of Jesus and the power of God came down. Praise the name of the Lord. I've watched, uh, I've watched uh, those things uh, come forth from the body, be dispelled, expelled, because the power of God was so great. See, we are not anywhere but touching the surface. We have not yet seen the glory of God that is coming back to the church again. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Let's use this scripture properly. I have not seen, ear hath not heard, and neither hath it entered the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him but let's contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints because they didn't have church like we have it. They had church where clover tongues of fire appeared and set upon them. Praise the name of the Lord. They exploded with the glory of God. The power of Christ was so great, it shook the place where they were because they were of one mind and one accord. They were not divided. They were not politically or socially or religiously divided. And let me tell you another thing about this wonderful spirit of God. It can heal a broken mind. It can heal. And there are broken minds that need to be healed. Praise the name of the Lord. Not only broken spirits need to be healed in the time that we're living in, but broken minds need to be healed. Broken young people need to be healed. Young people that have had experiences too early in life and has left them marred and their mind is marred from experimenting too soon with sex and drugs and other things. And we have a generation of it right now. Praise the name of the Lord. But there is a power that is coming to the church again, yes. that's going to heal, yes. not just the physical, Say it again. but heal the spirit, yes. and heal the mind, yes. and heal the body. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. And feel some of that right now. Say it again. I'm talking here. Praise our God. Say it again. Praise our God. Say it again. Now, how many agree we need it right now? of unpleasant incidents, uh, uh, grudges held. You're going to forgive that person. I'm going to forgive. I'm going to love. I'm going to not be a part man. 
or a partial woman. I'm going to be a whole man. I beseech you therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice. Praise the name of the Lord. Say it again. We're coming back into something glorious again. We're going to contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. You can't get victory over a habit until God gives you that victory. You can condemn a person. You can castigate them to hell. You can put them. You can shun them. You can have a shunning party. You can make them feel bad. But they cannot loose themselves from a mental or an emotional sickness or a need, a craving inside of them until Christ comes in. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, I, I want you to hear me right now because I, I, I feel definite about this book called Jude. And I believe we're to contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. There was a period in man's history. It wasn't, it wasn't Alexander the Great conquering the world as he did. It wasn't any of the orators or philosophers. It was the period in which a lone Nazarene yes. appeared on this earth. Yes. And they sat in darkness, yes. but they saw a light. Yes. They sat in the region and shadow of death, yes. but light sprung up. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. And he began to teach them, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. If you want to see God, get your heart filled. Amen. The Bible said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. I don't think we've had pure hearts all together. I think it's just time to get our hearts filled. I think our hearts have been adulterated with the religious stuff that's going on, with life that's going on, with experiences that's going on. I don't know about you, but I've lived life. I've got scars all over me. Yes, sir. From the time I was an old boy, watching my mother take action as she did, I've got scars of my father. I've got psychological areas that deal, I deal with. Uh, when I that was put there when I was 12, 14, 11, 10. I've got closets that I only go there. I don't let anybody else go there, <laughs> mentally, emotionally. There's a Christ that came to heal us and set the captives free. Praise the name of the Lord. He's wanting to set the church free right now. He's wrapping up some things. He, he wrapped up the law so he could bring grace. Did you know God has to do away with some things before he can bring other things? That's why he washes you so he can fill you. If he doesn't wash you properly, he won't fill you properly. But if you let him wash you in the blood, wash you and sanctify you and set you apart, he will fill you then with the power of the Holy Spirit. God's wanting to heal the church. God's wanting to heal people's minds, heal their spirit, heal their feelings. Heal their desires. Hallelujah. I don't pray for people like I used to anymore. When people come, I want the Holy Ghost. I don't start saying praising, 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 praising. No. You get it. You got it. You'll have it. I ask them to repent. Oh, yeah. I ask them to say, Lord, forgive me. Yes, I say, say to Jesus, wash me clean and make me whole and come in my spirit and come in my heart. Because that comes before the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's not going to enter in to an unrepentant spirit. You will not receive the Holy Ghost till you're broken and contrite in your spirit. You won't receive the Holy Ghost as long as there's a hard nature or a cruel spirit or unforgiveness. You won't receive it. The Holy Spirit is for those that are hungry. The hungry he'll fill with good things. But the rich he turns empty away. Oh, yes. Contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. What happened? What happened to that faith? The next verse, and I'll watch my time because it is that time, and I know the time we have between the services, so I'll, I'll, I'll bring a termination point in here with this lesson I'm giving in a few moments. Uh, but, but what 
was the reason that they didn't have the faith that was delivered to the saints when Jude wrote this letter. They had lost it. If they had it, he wouldn't have said contend for it. Try to bring it back. Try to restore it. But he said, you contend for it. Bring it back. Restore it. The last book in the Bible before the book of Revelation, and you have to get the book of Revelation by Revelation, the writer is saying to us, the church, we that are present, you contend for the faith as he did the scattered remnant of the church when he wrote the book back there. They didn't have it. It was gone. The church had fell away. It was in a great falling away when Jude wrote this letter. And he said, you contend for it. Now, why, why was that the reason that they lost it? And he said, I exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Verse 4 explains much about it. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, that is unlike God, turning the grace of our God, there's a big word to have a this, but it means lustful cooperation of your members toward evil. That's lasciviousness. Lustful cooperation of your members toward evil. And denying the only Lord God denying. and our only Lord Jesus Christ, or our Lord Jesus Christ. And then he said in verse 5, I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. And even the angels were not spared. And the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved an everlasting chains under darkness, under the judgment of the great day. Men crept in. Men crept in. And brethren, all around me, church, there's a wonderful attendance show on Sunday afternoon. I appreciate this turn out of God's people to hear the gospel, to worship. The only thing that has spoiled what heaven has tried to accomplish from the beginning of the first man, Adam, was Adam, or the Adam, or the nature of the carnal opposed to the nature of the spiritual. God's nature is spiritual. Man's nature is carnal in his fallen state. And he became a fallen man when he went against the will of God in the Garden of Eden. Now that same spirit intervened in the early church. And instead of the Apostle Paul preaching the everlasting gospel, Hymenaeus decided he would. Philetus decided he would. And they said such things as the resurrection of the dead is past already. Their word say it is a canker. What does a canker sore do to your body? It eats it up, doesn't it? You let it go. What does a cancer do? It destroys you. Their words became cancerous words. Men's words can either be the word of God or it can be cancerous words that will drive you away from God rather than bring you toward God. Because if a man is lustful in his intent, for power, prestige, or influence, yeah, huh? yeah. rather than lifting the name of Jesus, yeah. doesn't matter if he's ministering to five or 500, he will bring the people away from the faith, oh, yeah. and they'll quit contending for the faith, and they'll begin to have respect of persons, they'll hate instead of loving, yes. they'll be jealous and envious instead of forgiving, yes, sir. and their iniquity, like leprosy, will get in the house. Yes, sir. And finally the house has to be torn down because leprosy is in the house. The church that was 2,000 years ago had to be dismembered and torn apart and in its place came a replica called the church of the state and the church. And from that time the word Babylon 
has existed and the word beast has existed in the scriptures to be fulfilled. The church of Jesus Christ is not to be a place of confusion, no. Babylon, nor is it to be a place of the beast, the beastly spirit of man. It is to be a place of salvation, yes, a house of prayer Hallelujah. for all people, yes. a pathway of charity. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. It's to be a place of holiness. Yes. Nobody in here today should be feel uh, that God is discriminating against you because a man of God says the church must be sanctified, preserved in Christ, Amen. set apart. Right. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. I'm glad that we're not like everybody else. Yes. I'm glad that we don't copy everybody else. Right. I'm glad I'm not a me too person. Yes, no, I'm not a me too person. Praise the name of the Lord. I believe in holiness. Do you still believe yeah. in holiness? You know what holiness means? You know what holiness means? It means separation from that which is the world that God rejects. It means a clear cut separation. You're on this side and they're on that side. Yes, amen. You're sanctified, and they're, the, they're not. That's, uh, that's holiness. That's why Paul said uh, to the church, he said that you're to be holy. Use the word holy, godly. I'm, I'm, I'm thankful that we're just one can't walk out of here and go do what everybody else does. Amen. I'm thankful I won't live like everybody else amen. this week. I'm glad that the Lord has preserved me, amen. set me apart. I'm not mad at God because God said I can't be like them. I can't act like them. I can't talk like them. I can't look like them. I can't walk like them. I'm very happy the Lord chose me. Yes. Thought enough of me. Yes. Said you can be different yes. by the word. Yes. And go by the pattern yes. of the early church, the church of the first century, and contend for that faith that was once delivered unto them. So it's a, it's a wonderful thing yes. uh, to know that we have, a, uh, we have a homecoming coming up of a glorious day in which the church yes. will not be as we are, uh -huh. but we're going to be glorified yes. in his image yes. after his likeness, yes. and we will be worshiping God yes. in spirit and in truth before the coming of Christ again. Praise the name of the Lord. I rejoice right now because the starting process of his salvation is working on me and working in me and it's working through me. And it's working on you, it's working in you, it's working through you because God is going to restore the church and bring it back again to the state that it was where it had the power to say to the lame walk, the blind see, the deaf hear, but not only that, it can also take the demented mind and the broken spirit and say in the name of Jesus, be restored and be healed to your right mind. The man that was in the tombs, when they found him again, what does the Bible say they found? Clothed in his right mind. Holy clothes. Well, I believe I have the right mind. I want to thank God for the right mind. Praise the name of the Lord. I thank Him for the right mind. Why wouldn't it be the right mind? To bless you instead of to curse you. To say good things to you instead of bad. To be good and righteous instead of evil. To love the Lord. And love the plan of salvation. And to look forward to being a part of the saints of God that will be waiting for him or will go on to be in the first resurrection. I'm glad I found my right mind. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Have you had a good day? Amen. Have you enjoyed the word of God? Have you enjoyed the fellowship? Amen. Have you enjoyed the words God gave others? Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Have you enjoyed just being together yeah. and sitting together and feeling the love of God? Have you really felt lifted up today? Amen. Everybody that has, give the Lord a praise offering. Praise, praise the name of the Lord. I'm personally very encouraged, very happy, and I'm very thankful for the you that have come this day, and we've had this wonderful day together.
I, I'm praying that God will let us go further and further and further in the direction we're going. And I hope and pray that you'll believe with me that the cloud will not go where we don't get under it and the pillar of fire will not be removed where we're not under that in the darkness of this night. Stay where the cloud is. Stay where the pillar of fire is. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm glad to the Lord gave us this day, and if you are rejoicing in it like I am, and we'll say we can't do it all in this day, we'll take again tonight at 6 o'clock, and we'll see what the Lord has for us. There's a family coming tonight for the dedication of their children uh, to the Lord, and I'm looking forward to what God will give us in the evening service. Praise the name of the Lord. We don't have dinner in the dining room for all today, but if you are ever here, without a place to go and to take care of the needs you have as far as physical food is concerned and you let us know and we'll try to do our best to help you and to do what we can to take care of you. We've had a great day in the Lord and let's just rise up right now and give the Lord the yes. praise of it that belongs to him. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the day. We thank you for the blessings. And we thank you for your people. And we thank you for the word of God. And we thank you for good things that you put in our hearts. We pray that you'll go with us. And you'll lead us and you'll guide us. In the name of Jesus. And everybody said, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord and praise the Lord. Glad to see all of you. May God bless you for being here this day. And let's contend for the faith. Amen, amen. Mix and mingle one with another. And the Lord bless you, Reese.